Carol Duplessis, good morning to you. Hi, good morning to you. Are you well? Yeah, I'm fine, thanks. How are you? Good, good. No complaints, sir. I think the last time I saw you was at the Paul Boys High Great Brag in the Paul City Hall. Yes, that's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Did you have one again this year? Yes, no, it's, it's obviously uh, always the evening before, before the, the big game. Yeah, so, and I and I try and attend that sort of on an annual basis now. It's, it's good to see the old friends again and and, and uh, catch up. And did you go to the game? Yes, I, I went to the game this year. Uh, very tight, close game. Yeah, and uh, I think Paul Boys had a few chances to get points, and they didn't they didn't grab it, and in the end, it cost him the game. So Paul Jim won. I yep. yeah I, I I saw I actually saw the end of the game and the 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 celebrations did, I almost felt were a little bit over the top but uh, anyway I know it's you know it's one of those wonderful inter schools games that uh, causes a lot of passion and that sort of thing doesn't it? Yes, absolutely. You know, I mean, it's it's uh, over the years it's really sort of also um, you know picked up the momentum regarding involvement from you know old boys and, and um, lots of people in the community and obviously the big community, I think, uh, watching schoolboy rugby in South Africa. So that's that's good for the game and the spectacle that it is. But, uh, yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. You know, one should obviously just uh, keep in mind, you know, that it's... It's, uh... <laughs> it's a game. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Carl, I was just talking a little bit earlier. Now, for those... It's amazing, Carl Duplessis, known as the Prince of Wings, and played uh, primarily in the time when we were isolated, but played in that wonderful backline against the 1986 uh, Cavaliers with Garth Wright and Nas and your brother Michael, uh, Danny Gerber, yourself. Uh, um, uh, don't tell me, Johan Hunas at fullback, and the 400 meters. Uh, runner, the 400 meters runner. <laughs> Jaku Reinach, the late Jaku Reinach, yeah, whose son yeah. now is uh, doing well for the Sharks. Um, a, a, it was a great back climb, that, wasn't it? Yes, yeah, sure. it, it's, um, you know, I've, I've always thought about this. You know, it's, obviously, I think, like every, I suppose, every era in, in a rugby, or call it a, a decade, has some great players, you know, and those years, I think we were really blessed to have amazing uh, runners, you know, uh, attacking runners with a, with a ball in hand. Uh, you know, I mean, I think if you, if you look at, at people like Nas, uh, there were a few flies around that were really top quality flies, but obviously they had to play in the shadow of Nas. Uh, the same with people that, that try to, to uh, you know, compete for a place in the midfield, uh, but you have to compete against Dani Gerber, uh, Johan Hienes, Ray Mort, Jaku Reinach. Uh, no, wonderful attacking players, you know, sort of uh, with, with, yeah, it brought a special, I think, a bit of a special angle and, and, and to the game in those years. Yeah, absolutely. I also was mentioning the the try you scored at Twickenham for, was it a Southern Hemisphere side? Yes, uh, in 86, um, they had, they had the, the RB Centenary sort of uh, festival games. And uh, that one was in, uh, was at, played at Twickenham, the old Twickenham. Yeah. And that that was then the Northern Hemisphere against the Southern Hemisphere. That's right. Yeah. And you scored yeah. a try, and I'll always remember your one of the centres was Warwick Taylor. Yeah. And that's right. you you scored a try in the left hand corner, didn't you? Yes, that's right. I can. Uh, it's actually you know it's, it's, I suppose it's also in a, in a way you know. The approach to those type of games, um, I think, I think the Northern Hemisphere team had a, had a kick at goal and, and they missed, um, and and then we started running it from in goal with Roger Gould as fullback. We called him and he started running, uh. and then he and then he played to Herbert and Kerwin sort of to the one side of the field, and then uh, when they were sort of uh, blocked, you know, we we switched the, the the play to the left hand side of the field. Obviously, that's when the ball came my way. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know. I think, you know, again, you know, that's, uh, that's good times and, and uh, you know, to play with those type of players and they had a wonderful sort of approach and attitude towards the game. Which other side? Uh, Skulk Berger, wasn't Skulk Berger in that side? Yeah, he was there and, and also Flip van der Merwe. Oh, it was um, Flip van der yeah. Merwe. I, th I said I thought yeah. it might have been Uli. 
Um, yeah. But it was Flip van der Merwe, Nas, and you and Donny Gerber. Yeah, that's right. And that's who right. did you play with? I mean, well, you mentioned Kerwin and Taylor and some yeah, of the look, forwards. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, you had sort of uh, Andy Hayden was there. Okay. Um, Steve Toynman, Spoydervan from, from Australia, um, you know, and, and um, uh, Dalton, uh, Andy Dalton was there, and you had Dave Loveridge, a scrum off. So quite a quite a sort of a nice mix of of, of you know the obviously um, the players from Australia, New Zealand, and South Africa, and yeah, quite I, th- I thought a nice team of formidable combinations in that team anyway. Yeah, fan- I mean fabulous to get the opportunity to play with those uh, you know internationals from other countries. Yeah, well it's, it's a quite enjoyable time as well, you know that um, I think that even if you if you remember correctly that that. You know, we it was in the builder before the Cavaliers tour, uh, and we weren't aware that that at the time that there was a Cavaliers team coming out. You know, sort of we right. were playing mm-hmm. at, at, at that time and, and and being a sort of teammates and and uh, working on a team dynamic and trying to to be to be uh, sort of uh, you know to beat the northern hemisphere and all that. And and a, a couple of weeks later on, they were positioned as the Cavaliers uh, in a, in the test series back home. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, it was uh, it was sort of the era of when you captained Western Province and and won the Curry Cup on numerous occasions. Yes, we had a we had a very good run uh, um, for a few seasons in, in that sort of early and mid eighties. You, um, we obviously we were we had a very strong pack. Uh, the province, uh, you know, back of forwards, uh, at sort of those years, mm-hmm. a really sort of uh, a, a strong unit, uh, and and you know. Provide a quality sort of position, you know, from from your set piece, um, and then then you had people like Rob Lowe and your loose forward combination. I mean, which were really sort of all over the place and played the linking game. So it was easy to have an attacking sort of style of play with with the running backs, and and then uh, you had people like Rob Lowe keeping the ball alive and and being a link between between the backs and forwards. You know, so really we had a, a sort of a yeah, I think a very well balanced sort of outfit, outfit as well at that time. Yeah, you, you know, in recent weeks, I've I've in fact uh, spoken to the likes of uh, Hempis de Toy, Henning van Asviechen, Mona Duplessis was one of yeah. the uh, my guests, and Henny Becker. So all guys that you played with, um, and were in that formidable pack of forwards, as you say. Yes. Yeah. Look, and I mean, even even. Following into into to, to uh, their footsteps, then you had people like Kurt Small coming in, sort of a young number seven lock, but but really sort of a, a, a strong player, good lineup worker, and and uh, you know a good sort of player to have on the pitch with physical presence, uh, and and Scott Berger, you know sort of um, yeah, played yeah. six at six and eight, uh, sort of lots of pace, um, very strong in defence, and and uh, you know sort of lots of ball skill, so. Yeah, people like Jeff as well, obviously, was play, were playing at that time and, and uh, just sort of, you know, gave you that strength in your tight fives. And then, obviously, you had sort of this, um, you know, ability of the loose forward to really be mobile and, and, and skillful with, with ball in hand, you know, so it makes a big difference. Yeah, I remember, I re- you know, one of the unsung heroes, in a way, because he never played for South Africa and, and most certainly would have probably made a touring side, was cut our skulls. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think you, even if we look back, you know, in terms of the, you know, the, I suppose you know the kicking game. You know, you had people like Colin Beck, uh, possibly uh, underrated in a big way. Um, you know, cut our skulls, uh, superb kickers of the ball. You know, and and uh, you know guys that could get distance of 50, 60 meters, but also. You know, with percentages of ninety percent plus in in goal kicking, so yeah. you know, all along you had that balance as well. You know, to really sort of at times, you know, if, you know, have the option of the kicking game, um, and and they were superb. Uh, you know, sort of as as players also with the ball in hand. You know, so it was, you know, a lot of them, I suppose, in 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 the at that time, maybe, uh, you know, as you said, you know, um, could have been Springboks, but obviously they had the opportunity to play there. Yeah, sure. Carl, let's just go over to your uh, coaching career. That game that that we beat Australia when we scored 66 points at Loftus, 
Was that your final game, or we, we had you already to sort of got the "Don't Come Monday" call? That that was the final game. That but, was your but, final uh, game as coach. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. What? And, yeah. And obviously, obviously, after that, you know, we we were looking to obviously planning the end of year tour, and then then there was sort of you know a bit of a rumor going around that you know they have to have a rethink and it's going to be a change and all that. But uh, yeah, that 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 game was the final game before before I sort of moved out. Did you sort of feel uh, you know uh, hard done by in a way? I mean, you know, there your final game, you thrash Australia at uh, at Loftus, and then uh, you know, as I say, you then basically are told, "Thank you very much, you're out of here." Yes, it, it was, uh, at the time, you know, it, it's. Um I thought if we can, if we could just, in fact, that was my my proposal to 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 uh, SA Rugby at the time. I said let's let's do the end of year tour. Uh, that's basically then a, a season of a few months, you know, sort of. And if that wasn't up to to the the, the expectations, then we can we can split our ways, you know, without a, without a sort of a problem. Yeah. Um, because we've done a lot of the the hard work was done, the, the changing of of, of Certain combinations and the team dynamic, which was tough uh, at the time because there was not really a lot of time to work with a team or players. So it was all about really trying to look to uh, you know get extra time to work with relationships with the players and also phase in maybe one or two different things. Yeah. Um, but but again, stiff competition, you know. So it was always going to be tough if you if you take a few knocks uh, that you have to sort of you know. Uh, understand, you know, that the pressure will always be there. But I thought if we were given the end of year tour and, and, and the one can then see there's an ascendancy, the team performance and the results that we're getting, yeah. and, and uh, that would have made the difference, you know, to, to put the team on a slightly different sort of level of platform. Did you sort of, I mean, did you get an opportunity to put your case to SA Rugby? Yes, there was. There was an opportunity, but I'm I'm not sure whether that really was in, at that stage was really um, entertained. You know, I think it's more a case of going through the process of you know uh, we were anyway going to I was going to do a, a, a review of of uh, you know the team and everything that was sort of done up to that stage. Um, yeah, so I've, I've put together sort of that that sort of review um, at, at you know what analyzing the game at different levels uh, in terms of you know. The state of our game, um, yes, but but uh, I think that presentation was done, but I don't think you know that's just going to influence the decision. Was, yeah, was yeah. going to really influence them. Yeah, yeah, and then of course you know I mean we went on to what we went on to win seventeen tests in a row. Yeah, that's right. Then then you that, must have felt hard done. done by. <laughs> <laughs> You must have been the mud in. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's the nature of it as well. One must understand, you know, at some stage, you know, you hand over to somebody else and hopefully, you know, you've got to put sort of something in place that, that, that they can, you know, step, you know, move off from it. It's a decent platform, you know, that that, it, that continuity should be there. And 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 uh, I suppose, you know, it's just about, to me, it was just about, you know, being allowed uh more time, not just two months, you know, with a team of three months. Yeah, and, sure, and sure. And to see whether that, that thing, the changes are phased in and we're hoping to see in the way the team perform and, and, and so forth. But that just gets a bit of time to, to settle in and, 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 you know, sort of, yeah, unlock the value of that team. Yeah, sure. Carl, um, what, do you, what do you think of, of the current team? Yeah, I, I think we've got a, we've got a very strong team, uh, you, I think, and good depth. I'm, I'm a bit concerned about the depth, though, you know, because, um, you know, if we have to, to move back and, 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 you know, phase back in too many of the players that's basically, you know, older and moving The older forward. players, and, yeah. yeah. Are we yeah, moving okay. forward? That's the big thing. Yeah. I'm a bit concerned about that because, you know, at the same time, you can't just fill the pipeline with 18 and 19 year olds, you know, uh, because they get injured and, and uh, the re rehab recovery is always a challenge. But uh, yeah, my concern is just you know we we've been a bit exposed at, in the front row, yeah. um, so we left a lot of work there, and I'm I'm think I'm, I know they will you yeah. know that but uh, we we've, we've always had had sort of our game based around strong physicality you know confrontational type game, 
But I, we also all the years have had a strong sort of attacking running backs, you know. And, and um, well, that's what worries me. Are we yeah. using those strong running backs, the the Jan Safentains of the world? Um, are we? Are we? In your opinion, do you think we're using them to good effect? No, I, I think that's where we have to improve. Yeah, otherwise, we're really going to be maybe shown out, uh, you know, in the next sort of. A few months, but but uh, obviously going to World Cup, which is which is different sort of conditions. I suppose one could play more the conservative style of play, but uh, I think it will just build our confidence if we allow those players to 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 uh, you know to add more value to the team performance. You know, even if we look at at, at really a bit of a fresh fresh air that Valerie Larue has brought into the team in Absolutely. terms of the attacking options. Yeah. So that, that to me is just where we need to really sort of um, be prepared, you know, to to make some changes in the way we, you know, in the style we play, and 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 rather manage the risk of it, you know, don't, don't be don't be don't have fear for the, for the risk element that comes with that type of game. Rather, condition your player, prepare your player, build his confidence, uh, and and um, you know, grow the team in that sort of regard. Okay. There we have the opinion of Carl Duplessy. Funnily enough, Carl, it's it's sort of the opinion of uh, a, a very similar opinion uh, that has been expressed by you know the Mornay Duplessis, the Henny van Osvierkens, the Henny Beckers, and I. You know what's great to see is the is the Ches and Colbys and the and the Sia Bella Sonatlas of the world. The way they are fitting into the Western province pattern and dodging people. You know, people talk about swerves and sidesteps and, <laughs> and you yeah. know, stepping and all this. I always say, dodge the guy, run where the tackler yeah. isn't, you know. Yeah, it's, it's a, you're, you're right, too. I mean, it's, you know, uh, I think, you know, we, we're realistic about the expectations of test rugby. Uh, so you've got you to sort of, you know, go in there and understand you can't have a free-for-all Sort of uh, high risk game. No, sure. But yes, it's about it's about the evasive skills and 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 the visual ability of I those like players. I like that and, evasive and, skills. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And one should should also to me, it's it's the brand. I think you know, it's where do you go with your brand? And, and you know, to me, the brand of, of the game is going to be to go out and enjoy watching Sinatra, having having a full go, and yeah. uh, you know, being great, being given opportunities, you know, and 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 space. Yeah. Um, that's that's the next generation player, I think. You know, we must build our game around the, those skills and skill sets. I think. You know, anyway. Okay. I, you know, I, I can remember my uncle. My uncle was a, a very keen on uh, on sport, and I can remember him phoning me up and saying, "I am going to watch Vitz this afternoon because Wolf Rosenberg is playing." Yeah. yeah and you know, yeah. I, you know, we wanted. I'm going to Newlands because Carl Duplessis is playing. I'm going to, you know, to the Nelson Mandela Stadium because Danny yeah. Gerber is playing. Yeah. You know, not, yeah. not because Eastern Province are playing, because yeah. Danny Gerber. We need to build those, those uh, uh, exciting personalities. Yeah, absolutely right. Yeah. And, and that, in a, in a way, will also support your brand. It will grow your brand of, of the EP Kings and all of the Western Province, uh, the Stormers and so forth. Yeah, but yeah. you're right. I mean, to me, I would, I'm going out there to watch Chess and Colby and, and yeah. Sinatra play. Yeah. And I, I'm trying to take the next generation of, of supporter, which we hopefully we will we'll get to up the live attendance of the game, take them with me and, and so they can identify with, with the Chess and, 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 and the Sibelius and Atlas, you know. Yeah. So uh, that's the idea. So that's you know, the next generation of, of people looking to, to, to watch the game and follow the game, they obviously associate themselves and identify with those heroes and role models, you know, and I think uh, it's all about the excitement of it, you know, and, and hopefully we can get that mix right, you know, where you understand you need to win a, 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 the game as well, but, but the way you win it is important. Yeah, fabulous. I, uh, you know, we, we live too on, on the tweets that we get, and I've just had a tweet from one Graham Duplessy who says, Agreed, Mr. Blades. That applies to our big loose forwards always looking for contact. Run for the space, rather, damn it. <laughs> 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 uh, well, Graham, you know, I'm, I'm pleased you agree. I'm pleased you agree with, with the great Carl Duplessy. Carl, this is a little bit of, of where are we now? Or where are they now? Our, our former great sporting heroes. Where are you now? 
Yeah, look, we, we, we're still close to, to, to sport of the game. Uh, I'm involved with, with, with uh, the technology that we, we, we bring into, into this performances analysis side of things. So it's game analysis, but also, you know, that we try and, and, and trace and track, you know, the athlete better, you know, with GPS uh, sort of devices and, and so on. And ultimately, hopefully, you, you can contribute towards, you know, the player or the athlete, you know, um, you know performing at a, at a certain level more often than not and and uh but understand how to manage that workload so you don't get fatigued you don't get burnout you know oh, well, are, are you doing this as a business yeah we're doing it as a business yeah yeah so we we, we we're building and rolling that out yeah oh yeah. uh, wow and th- so you're offering your services to to provinces <laughs> and that type of thing yes and and but it's so to the to the provinces, but also it's also looking at at how one can improve the athlete. You know, whether it's whether it's a rugby player or, or uh, if this is relevant to other sports. Obviously, you know, because it's um, it's just in that 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 sort of space where where I think uh, you know high performance sort of uh, uh, training and and preparation of players are are, are being done. Yeah, uh, yeah. To try and see if you can if one can add something in there where they they can train better, train smarter perform better more often and, and uh, try and avoid, you know, sort of burnout and, and injury risk, you know, by overloading players. So, uh, yeah. And are you in partnership with anybody? No, no, we have a small business that we're driving on that. And, um, yeah, we, we look at basically we see we see the sporting teams or, or elite teams as, as, as the partner. You know, they, okay. they go out yeah. between the four white lines and, and we, we see if we can play a role to – to support them in a way that prepare that uh, the athlete, you know. So How that, interesting uh, is that? Yeah, that's terrific. Where are you living now? I'm in I'm still Cape Town based, Western Cape. Yeah. Um, so you live in yeah. Cape Town? Uh, no, just outside of Cape Town, uh, Durbanville area. That's okay. sort of in the northern suburbs, halfway between Cape Town and Stellenbosch. But um, so I, I don't have the I don't have the, the the problem of the traffic like you have you so I, I, <laughs> I have to face traffic for an hour or two hours of every day of my life so that that makes things a bit easier. <laughs> no, well I'm I'm lucky. Uh, you know the Balls Radio Studio is uh, is um, uh, against the traffic, so that's rather lucky on a Monday morning. And then of course uh, I'm semi-retired, so I you know I now have to make my way to rugby grounds. Around, okay. I, I spend more time on aircraft than on, on the roads. <laughs> Carl, tell me now, your son was a good fly half. Where is your Where is your boy now? Yeah, he's he's uh, at the moment finishing off with the Sharks Academy. He's, he's had a, a, sort of his time with the Sharks Academy, uh, and and uh, you know playing rugby, obviously, and doing the high performance rugby rugby thing. But obviously, at the same time. Uh, having to study as well, so so uh, he's he's with the Sharks Academy at the moment. And um, is he playing? He, is he getting some game time for the Sharks? Yeah, no, no, not the seniors. No, he's no, I mean the junior so sides. Yeah, yeah, he's recovering from injury. Oh shame! But he's, yeah. he's had a good season. Uh, he's had a good season so far. He was actually select. He was with Andre Pollard. They were the two flyers uh, at the Junior World Cup. So that was. Uh, yeah, well, there we go. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So he made the SA under 20 side, as I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah Fabulous right. stuff, yeah. Okay, Carl, can you believe we've been talking for 25 minutes? And uh, <laughs> we've, I've, I've come to the end of my time on the show. And uh, just, you know, it's great to talk to you. It's great to hear you uh, sounding so healthy and, and uh, doing what you're doing. And uh, thank you very much. Thanks for, for taking the time to talk to me. Yes, you. That's good to talk to you and uh, keep well. We'll see you soon. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank Cheers, you. Carl. Bye-bye. 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 The great Carl Duplessis. What a, what a player he was. You younger guys who missed the opportunity of seeing. He, Carl Duplessis, you know, VK, he would run and his hips would go one way and his legs would go the other way. <laughs> and he just, I mean, he, he just, uh, the, they called him the Prince of Wings, the Prince of Wings, Carl Duplessis, Captain Western Province to many a Curry Cup victory. I remember him scoring a try. I was commentating the game. He was scored a try in the Curry Cup final right, in the, right at the end. 
to, against Northern Transvaal. They were, they were in injury time, and he ran past about five of the Northern Transvaal players to score and to uh, level the scores. I'm not going to mention the fly half who missed the kick, Shane. He missed the conversion from the touchline to win the game. Western Province against Northern Transvaal. I've come to the end of my time. Wings of Change Golf Day. Book your spot at the Wings of Change Golf Day today. There are only a few four balls and sponsorship opportunities left. So don't delay. 23rd of September 2014. That's this month, folks. 23rd of September 2014. Shotgun at Shotgun Start, that is. At 11.30, Wingate Park Golf Club. That's uh, just uh, this side uh, of Pretoria. Four ball alliance, two scores to count, three players plus one allocated celebrity. I told you, I, went, I said to my daughter, I'm playing in a celebrity golf day. She said, oh, I wonder who your celebrity will be. <laughs> uh, contact Diane Mark, for Mark my, from Mark My Words. Contact Diane Mark from Mark My Words. Listen, get, grab a pencil. Grab a pencil. 082. 793-9337 or email Diane, that's D-I-A-N-E at markmywords, one word, markmywords.co.za 082-793-9337 or Diane at markmywords.co.za We have one uh, Graham Duplessis, that was great to hear. Oh, great. Yeah, Gary, it's fantastic, isn't it, that these guys take the time out to talk to me. And uh, the great Carl Duplessis, the last one. We've had Hempis de Toy. We've had Mornay Duplessis. We've had Henning van Asvirchen. We've had Henny Becker. We will have more. I won't be here next Monday because on Wednesday I'm off to Perth, packing for Perth. And uh, so in order for me to, uh, I will only be getting back next Monday. My time is up. The mob are here. They're moving into the studio to entertain you. So it's time for me to say, I hope that you have an unbelievable week. Thanks, Comfort. Thanks, VK. Bye.